WTF. Planetary defense is a team sport. What would we do if a dangerous asteroid is discovered? Stay cool. I know, yay, right? This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... There were other people. Why should you be the only one involved? But I am involved. We are all involved. It doesn't matter what I believe. Hit the button, baby. Thor News presents... And hey, Alex, technically, if you wanted to have a good example, artist interpretation of the ARM program, wouldn't that dog only be getting a pepperoni instead of the whole slice of the pizza? NASA's bold asteroid capture mission pluck. I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. This is something NASA rejected. Houston, be advised. We've got a video message. I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. To do much better. All right. Welcome to this wonderful and very special Asteroid Fight Club meeting. Now sit down, shut up, and listen, because this shit is important. We are over at the American Institute of Physics, and apparently somebody in the Senate is a big Thor News fan because they are very skeptical of the NASA Defend Asteroid Redirect mission. Uh, and uh, I've been making fun of their anti-asteroid ideas for a while. I make fun of them, and then they get mad. Someone's like, hey, dude, NASA's mad at you. And then I chill out. And then a bunch of trolls come out and are like, you love NASA. I'm like, hey, dude, they just threatened to chop off all my fingers, dick brains. So step back and let the heat cool down. What are you, a monkey? No disrespect to monkeys. What are you, a chimpanzee? No disrespect to chimpanzees. Oh, I forget, you're just an internet troll. So let's carry on with the real fucking science, shall we? FYI, the AIP Bulletin of Science Policy News. White House and NASA defend asteroid redirect mission. The Senate, skeptical in new bill. All right, they've had like, the first idea was like a asteroid condom when they throw a trash bag around the asteroid because everybody knows nothing in a trash bag can hurt you. And then their next idea was like a space shotgun and where they shoot it with like paint pellets. And then their idea after that was like the over the shoulder boulder holder where they grab an asteroid and then they drag it to the moon. And they have the moon have a moon. And I'm like, okay, you got a one mile asteroid coming in, could it hit Earth? How do either one of those have to do anything with anything? They're like, well, it helps us get to Mars. I was like, whoa, you can only serve one master, bro. Are you serving the like protect Earth from asteroids master? Or are you serving the Martian master? That's a rhetorical question. You can answer at home if you'd like. And the last thing that Senate got skeptical about was the James Webb Space Telescope. Well, back then it was called the Next Generation Space Telescope. And they were like, wow, it's really taking you guys 15 billion and 20 years to build a telescope? And science was like, yes, yes it is. Now shut up and give us our money and leave us alone. Congress was like, okay. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy and NASA held an event this week to explain the rationale for the administration's proposed asteroid redirect mission. Congress has been skeptical about the mission's value. And this skepticism was further confirmed in a new Senate NASA reauthorization bill yesterday. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. And technically, a lot of NASA people make fun of their asteroid redirect mission behind their own backs. Because, yes, it sucks that bad. But hey, great news. Maybe the new president, Clinton or Trump, will have a visionary vision for the future of our space program. My guess is they'll be like, hey, whatever the space pirates want, that's what we'll do. Why does everything have to suck so bad, man? Oh, it's 2016. Thank God, it is almost 2017. On September 14th, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy and NASA held an event to explain the purpose and value of the asteroid redirect mission. You got any video on that? The administration's proposal to capture a boulder from an asteroid. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pluck a boulder off of an asteroid and then sling it around the moon. And so I guess their thought process is like, you got a one-mile asteroid coming in to hit Earth, and they're like, well, we're going to take a boulder off that giant asteroid, so when it hits Earth, it won't do as much damage as it would have done if the boulder was still on it. Right? Okay, great. <sighs> the administration's proposal, ARM, the administration's proposal to capture a boulder from an asteroid and bring it into orbit around the moon for study. See, like, are we studying the freaking asteroids, or are we trying to stop them from destroying a city or civilization? And I thought something was, was suspicious when uh, none of these people had joined my club, Asteroid Fight Club, where we fight anything that can cause the collapse of civilization. They're like, is there a lot of money to be made in Asteroid Fight Club? I'm like, no, great. technically I don't think there's any money to be made in Asteroid Fight Club. But 
I get to keep civilization standing. Isn't that a good enough reward? I guess no. Speaking at the event were OSTP, Director John Holdren, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden, and ARM Program Director Michelle Gates. Whoa, is that Bill's wife? In his remarks, Holdren first outlined four components of the administration's vision for human space exploration. Wait, we have a vision for human space exploration? I thought it was like, oh yeah, we're going to Mars like in 2030, 2040, 2050 something. We're just going to spend a lot of money getting ready to go to Mars in 20 years. We're going to spend a lot of money now getting ready to go to Mars in like 30 years. Is that like a great deal? Yeah, like, how about give me a billion dollars and I'll work on my time machine and I'll have it ready in 30 years. Is that like a deal? Wonderful. Working with the private sector to develop cost-effective means of expanding human presence in space? Wow, those private sector people keep having rockets to blow up. Is that good or bad? I guess it's part of the learning curve. If you've got to go from being a private company to being at the top of your game and matching a national space agency that's been around for over 50 years, I guess you're going to have some hiccups along the way. It seems a lot to ask. And how does SpaceX make money, by the way? Developing new technologies for space exploration... Extending use of the International Space Station <laughs> into the mid-2020s because high school science classes will always have projects that the ISS can help out with. And NASA's here to help high school science as much as it can so that it can serve as a test bed for these new technologies and executing a series of increasingly ambitious missions to take humans beyond low Earth orbit. We've already been to the moon, so you can say, like, beyond the moon, you know, because we've already been there. Now that we're stuck in low-Earth orbit, it still counts that we went to the moon before, right? So you can say, <sighs> whatever. Holdren then explained that the arm is a key part of the vision as it provides a destination for humans to conduct operations near the moon and demonstrates advanced electric propulsion capabilities key to the ultimate goal of sending humans to Mars. First of all, why is that the ultimate goal? Like, is our space agency going to end when we get to Mars? Wouldn't, like, the ultimate goal be to set foot on every planet in the solar system is really like Mars, the be-all, end-all here. And it seems like Mars is already here on Earth, getting humans to mine all the resources out of our own planet and then locking us in some weird slave state where humans hate humans for no real good reason. Aldrin also stated that ARM serves as an important demonstration of asteroid deflection techniques that could one day help prevent an asteroid from striking Earth. Wait, so how does plucking a boulder off of an asteroid and then flinging it around the moon help prevent an asteroid from striking Earth? I guess they didn't have anybody like me around there that could ask questions like this. They probably just had G-men, astronomy reporters, or pretty much G-men, and like Astro Mutt there, asking questions that were handed to them. It's like, if Senate's like, hey, this idea sucks. And Thorne was like, hey, this idea sucks. And that's the people behind the scenes like, hey, this idea sucks. And maybe this idea sucks, man. I need your love. Party dance time.